Good morning. I say good morning. Good morning. There you are. Good to be in God's house today. Uh, so thankful that the Lord has allowed us to come and he's given us this opportunity to assemble in his name and worship him today. Uh, there's nothing better to be doing today than lifting up the name of our Savior. So let's get started by singing a song together. today. We're glad you're here. We especially want to welcome you if you're visiting with us today. Uh, we just want you to make yourself right at home. We're here to worship the Lord, so you join us in doing that. We want to welcome everybody who's joining us out in our parking lot as well. We're so glad you've come this way also. I want to thank everybody for praying for me. I do have another hole in my head now, like I needed another one. Uh, but this one seems to be healing up good. Don't you say nothing, Arthur. <laughs> but we, I do thank the Lord that uh, he's uh, taken care of us, brought us through this. Okay, by the way of announcements, uh, today we are going to take up a special love offering for Amanda and Ashley. Uh, that'll be after the service today. We're going to have somebody standing at this door, and we'll have somebody standing outside the front doors there so that the folks who want to come up from the parking lot can also come up and give their offering there as well. Okay, so remember that. Uh, there will be a drop-in household shower for Todd Bryson on Saturday, March the 27th from 2 to 4 in the Fellowship Hall. So let's remember that too. Any other announcements today? Glad to be able to say, let's turn it over to the choir. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with our songs of faith, number six. <laughs>
to the Lord did cry. He is a sinner, and now he must die. Then I heard a voice say, Father. Cavalry's throne. I buried my body. The marks of the cross to save this child who is sin sick and lost. And you see.
Amen. I just love our choir, don't you? Amen. Amen. Thank God for each one that takes part. <laughs> Got a honk out of that, too. <laughs> they love him out there, so that's good. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb indeed. wonder who's got an object of prayer to mention this morning. Bill Carpenter. Bill Carpenter. <clears throat> my mama, she's been real sick for the past couple of weeks. Michelle's mother. Amanda and Ashley. Elaine's family, I didn't catch that, Kathy. Sorry. Amanda and Ashley. And then Ashley for sure. Yeah. Pray for the girls. Mom, she's still having blood pressure problems. Chuck's mm -hmm. mother. <clears throat> if you will pray for the girl's great grandmother. She's got some major procedures coming up the end of this month and in April. And just pray that she can come through those and get to feeling much better. Good friend of mine, Ricky Ward's possibly less the Lord intervenes, lose his wife today in COVID in Haywood County Hospital. So he can pray for that family, pray for him, pray for her. Remember my mom, she's had a rough couple of weeks. So. Teresa's mom. Rebecca Schuler. Rebecca Schuler. Anybody else today? Just continue to remember the kids. I mean, it's been this whole deal, not being in school full time, and it's taking a toll on them. And it's, uh, it's a thing they get forgot about sometimes. We must do pray for our kids. It's always hard for them, but it seems to be even more so now. Can you? What was it? today my aunt's got some issues pretty serious issues going on so they don't know what's going on she's had three surgeries and uh, she's had a chat I believe this week so, Daniel you know, so we don't know it's cancer but we don't know if it's that or, we're pretty sure it's not cancer but it's just a whole lot of other issues going on Brother Arthur. Any more? They're all important to the Lord, so they were all important to us too. <clears throat> Brendan Henry Jones. Brendan Henry Jones. Joe Allen Blanche. Miss Nellie and Miss Lydia. Anything else? Let's pray for all of these today. Pray for God to have His will in each of their lives, each of their situations. God always knows what's best. And I'm glad he's the one that's in control, not me and you. Let's just trust him today. I think that'll work, don't you? Well, let's pray for the service as well. It's already been good to be here. But, uh, let's pray for God to fully have his way with me and you today. All that can and will. Let's come pray. Turn in our Bibles this morning to the book of Galatians, chapter 5. <clears throat> 
Galatians chapter 5, we'll begin reading with verse 13. Galatians 5.13 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law was fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. May God add his blessings to his word today. Well, we just marked the one-year anniversary of being in a global pandemic. Did you celebrate it in some way? Recognize it somehow? Yeah, it was one year ago, uh, this past week, when the world stopped, when everything changed. And a lot has happened in the course of, the, of that year. I think we know that. We've been through so much. And just look at where we are now, where we are today. Is this a crazy time that we're living in or what? I mean, how confused are we? How confused are we right now? Let's see if we can get an idea. We are so confused that we have decided that Dr. Seuss is racist. Yeah, the children's books, that Dr. Seuss. Even though the only colors I remember him talking about were green eggs and red and blue fish. Yet somehow he's racist. We are so confused that we have determined that Mr. Potato Head is just Potato Head from now on. We can't seem to even tell if we're a boy or a girl anymore. We are so confused that we have declared Pepe Le Pew to be a sexual criminal who encourages rape. A cartoon skunk is, is a sexual criminal in the day we're living in. So we've canceled all his cartoons along with Elmer Fudd's gun. And how confused is the guy in the White House? Pretty confused, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you how confused he is. He is so confused that he thinks that we actually need his permission to have a barbecue with our friends and family on the 4th of July. Uh, no, we don't need his permission. Not at all. Now, all of this would be completely laughable, and we do laugh a little bit, and that's good. We need to keep our sense of humor about things. All of this would be considered a total joke if it wasn't so sad. And the reason it's sad is because it's really happening. This crazy, ridiculous stuff that I'm talking about is actually being done. That seems hard to believe sometimes, but it is. This confusion is spreading, and it is threatening to consume everything in its path. And speaking of consuming and being consumed, that's what Paul is warning us about here in this passage. There in verse 15, he tells us to take heed. He says, take heed. That means we need to be careful. That means we need to pay attention. Because if we don't, he says, we could wind up being consumed by one another. What in the world is he talking about? That may seem like sort of a strange warning, but it's very appropriate, I believe, for the strange times that we find ourselves in. And I believe it's also very needed to, to keep us from, from doing this, from consuming one another, 
to keep all of this confusion that is swirling around us today from coming into the church and coming into our lives. So he says, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Now he's not talking about a physical consumption here. Like when we eat our meals, when we eat our food, we eat our chicken fingers or whatever. But he is talking about a consumption that also happens with our mouths. We're going to talk about the mouth today. So buckle up. There in verse number 15, the first part of it, he says, But if ye bite and devour one another. How do you bite? With your mouth. With your teeth. How do you devour something? With your mouth. That's how we eat our food. We cut it up, we put it in our mouths, we chew it up, and then we swallow it, and it is devoured. He's warning us about our mouths today. When he says, if you bite, he's not talking about actually running up to somebody and biting. That would really be weird, and I hope I never see that here. (laughs) He's talking about back body, that kind of body. When we say things about each other, when we say things about our brothers and sisters in Christ that are not kind, that are not nice, that are not good and may not even be true, and we say it behind their back, not to their face, that is backbiting. Then he talks about devouring one another. How's that happen? You ever heard of that? Well, I've heard of having the preacher for Sunday lunch. You know, when you go home after the service and you sit down to your meal and you start carving him up. You start talking about everything he did wrong that day. Uh, Talking about everything he said that you didn't like, that you didn't agree with. Oh, he's off on that, off bad. So you have the preacher, the pastor, for Sunday lunch. Happens a lot, probably going to happen today, I imagine, in some places. Paul says, take heed that you don't do these things. So although this consuming can affect our physical lives, and it can affect our material lives, our greatest concern has to be for how it affects us spiritually. For the effect that it is going to have on you and me, that it's going to have on our church spiritually. Because folks, here's the truth. We already have the devil seeking to devour us. He's already roaming around looking to eat us alive. So the last thing that we need is to do this to one another. The very last thing that we need right now in the confusing world that we find ourselves in is to do the devil's job for him. Last thing we need. So how do we keep from this? How do we prevent this from happening? How do we keep from devouring one another, being consumed one of another? Well, Paul tells us. He gives us some things that we need to remember. And he says we need to remember, first of all, that we are called to liberty, not legalism. We are called to liberty. Look at verse 13. He says, for brethren. Now let me stop right there. Let's let's be sure we understand who he's talking to, who he is addressing. He said brethren. So he is talking to his brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking to Christians. He is talking to God's people. He's talking to the members of this church. Okay? For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. We have been called unto liberty. Thank God. Thank Him for His wonderful gift. For the precious, priceless freedom that is ours Through Christ today. He has freed us. He has freed us first of all from sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. 
We are no longer in bondage to our lustful desires so that we have no choice, that we are just following along as it would have us to go. Jesus died on the cross. He shed His blood to free us and to forgive us of our sin. He has also freed us from the law. We're no longer under the law today. We're under grace. We are so fortunate to live in this time, as crazy and confusing as it may be, because now we no longer have to worry about fulfilling the law. Christ did that for us. So why is he reminding them, the Galatians here, that they've been called unto liberty? It's because this church, this church in Galatia had a problem. And their problem was legalism. Now legalism is when we try to take something extra and put it on ourselves or put it on each other. When we have these extra expectations, these excessive expectations that we either put on ourselves or try to put on each other. That's legalism. And that's what they were doing. They were putting the yoke back on. They were putting it back on themselves and back on each other. Paul says up in verse number 1, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, that liberty that we're called to. He says, Stand fast, therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. You're back under the law with legalism. Now, in the church here at Galatia, this particular problem that they had with legalism was mainly due to the fact that there was a group of people there called the Judaizers. And Judaizers were converts to Christianity who still believed that there were certain customs of the Jewish faith that you needed to carry on in order to be saved. They wanted to take something extra and add it on. In their minds, faith in Christ alone was not enough. That was not all it took. You had to add this other thing to truly and fully be saved. And in their case, the custom they were holding on to was circumcision. They believed that every man, yes, he had to accept Christ. Yes, he had to trust Jesus as his Savior. But he also had to be circumcised or he couldn't be saved. And so Paul's setting them straight here. He says, that's not true. That's not the way it is. He says, for I testify again. I've already told you this. I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. It is Jesus plus and minus nothing. It is grace plus and minus nothing that saves us. They were trying to say that it was. They were being legalistic. And we might sit back today and say, you know, I'm so glad we're not like that. I'm so glad that we have put legalism behind us once and for all. That we don't do this to ourselves and that we don't do this to each other. We don't look for anything extra. Uh, we're just satisfied with Christ in his work. So we're not legalistic anymore. Aren't we? You sure about that? Let me give you an example. I said we marked our one year anniversary of being in a pandemic, right? And this has brought many new things to our lives. Many new challenges to you and me and to our faith. And one of those things that it's brought to us uh, that is new and that is different from what we've ever seen before, I like to call the great mask debate. There is a great debate about masks in our society, in our world, in our country, and yes, in our church. You got two crowds. You got the mask crowd and you got the anti mass crowd. Those people in the mass group, they believe that masks work and that everybody ought to wear them 
all the time. They're very uh, serious about this, some of them are. The anti-mask crowd, not so much. They don't think masks help at all, that you shouldn't be made to wear one unless you want to. And we have both of these groups in our church. And you know what? That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Where the problem comes in is when you get one group trying to put their beliefs on the other group. For instance, when the mask group says, well, those people who aren't wearing a mask, they're being reckless. They are endangering their own health and the health of everybody around them. They need to put on a mask. And if you don't put on a mask, you're not being moral. Your morality is not what it needs to be unless you wear a mask like I do. You're not right. You're not what you should be. That's putting something extra on somebody. Then you got the anti-mask crowd over here. And they might say, well, if you just had enough faith, you'd take that mask off. If you truly believe that God was going to take care of you, you wouldn't wear a mask. Putting something extra on them. I don't know about you, but that sounds like legalism to me, people. So no, we've not got past it. But we need to. We need to remember that we are called unto liberty. God has called all of us to freedom. Each and every one of us as an individual believer in Christ, we are to live for God and we are to worship God the way that we see fit without somebody else telling us, oh, you got to do this too. You need to add this or you're not good enough. You're not going to make it. God believes in self-determination. He is big on that. He wants you and I to follow Him as He leads us, not as somebody else tries to tell us. We need to remember, we're called unto liberty so that we don't consume one another. Paul said we also need to remember that we are supposed to be consumed by love. I told you you'd be having the preacher for lunch today. We're supposed to be consumed by By love. Last part of verse number 13. He says, But by love serve one another. For all the law was fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We make Christianity too complicated. We really do. We try to make it about more than it should be. I believe God wants us to keep it simple. And when you get right down to it, Christianity is all about love. Being a Christian is all about love. Following God, living for God, it's all about love. We are to love Him and we are to love each other. Now it might look as you read this verse, you might think, well, Paul's left something out there in verse 13 because he's quoting Christ here and Christ had told originally when he said this that the first commandment was to love the Lord thou shalt love the Lord thy God that was the first commandment and this was the second one Paul didn't leave that out by mistake what he's doing here is he's focusing on the second part first part when Christ said thou shalt love the Lord thy God that applies to the first four commandments the first four of the ten commandments they tell us how we are to relate to God they deal with how we are to treat God commandments five through ten they deal with how we are to relate to each other how we are to treat each other and so that's why he quotes this here And in verse 13 he says, but by love serve one another. Can I say it's all about love. And our church, our church should be all about love. I want the kind of church that is filled with God's Spirit, 
but that is also filled with God's love. And I'm going to tell you something. You cannot have one without the other. We're not going to have God's spirit in our church unless we have God's love in our church. I want this to be the kind of church that is filled with God's love. I want this to be the kind of church that when you walk through the door, you can feel the love of God. It surrounds you. It swallows you up. That's what I want to be consumed by is God's love. Paul says, by love, serve one another. Do we love each other? Before you answer, think about it. Do we show that we love each other by serving one another? That's how we do it, by helping one another, by seeking to meet one another's needs. Not just looking on my own things, but looking on the things of others and doing it with the right motive in my heart. My motives need to be pure and they need to be genuine. If I'm doing something just because I have to, what good is it? If I feel like it's expected of me, somebody put this yoke on me so I've got to do it. No, that's no good. Everything that I do for the Lord, everything that I do for God's people must be done by love. Out of love. It needs to come from my heart. It needs to be sincere or in God's eyes, it's worthless. It's no good. So he says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is a commandment. He says, thou shalt love. The first part, same way. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. So this is not optional for you and me as a child of God, as one of his people. We are commanded to love. Thou shalt love. Not thou might, but thou shalt love. Who? Thy neighbor. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Well, who's my neighbor? That's that old question again. It's not just the people who live right beside of you, okay? It's also not just your friends and your family. It's not just the people that you like and get along with. It's not even just your church family. Your neighbor is anybody that God puts in your path. No matter what color they are, no matter what nationality they are, no matter what their background may be, if God puts them in your path, they are your neighbor. The parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us that. That man was traveling down the road, and there he came across the other man that had been beaten and robbed. God put that man in his path. And so he stopped and he helped that man. He took care of him. He met his needs. That's our neighbor. Anybody and everybody that God puts in my path that I see that is in need, that I see that is in hurting, that I see that I can help, I'm to love them and do what I can to meet their needs. And he said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Not as you want to, not as much as you want to, but you are to love them like you love yourself. As much as you love yourself, that's how much you're supposed to love your neighbor. As much as you care about yourself, that's how much you're to care about your neighbor. The way that you take care of yourself, you're to do the same for them. What a commandment. But Paul is reminding us, called to liberty and we should be consumed by love so that we don't consume one another and then one other thing that he reminds us of is that we also need to be conformed in spirit conformed in spirit verse 16 this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things 
that you would. So in the life of a Christian, if you're saved today, if you've been born again, there is the Spirit and there is also the flesh. There is the Holy Spirit because the very moment that we are saved, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. He comes and indwells us and takes up his abode within us and he will be with us always, even to the end of the world. If you're saved today, the Spirit of God is inside you and always will be. But also, there is the flesh. That's your old man. That is your sinful nature. It's still there. And it will be so long as we are in these mortal fleshly bodies. And the two of them are at war inside you. They are fighting against each other. They are struggling for control because each one wants its way. Each one wants its own desires. So which one wins? Who decides? You do. And I do. By the choices that we make, by our decisions, we determine whether the Spirit is in control or we give in to our flesh. And Paul says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. And that word walk there means live daily. Live every day. Live every minute of every day in the Spirit, seeking to do what the Spirit would have us to do following His leadership, letting Him have control, surrendering and submitting ourselves to the Spirit. Every day, it's a struggle, isn't it? Our lives are a battlefield. This war is going on constantly. So every day, we cannot let down our guard. Every day, we have to get up and make these same choices and these same decisions, and not just when we get up, but throughout the whole day, it goes on. But we decide, we determine which one prevails. We've been freed from sin. Sin does not have dominion over us any longer. This is our choice. And Paul's saying, please make the choice. I'm telling you this again. Walk in the Spirit. Choose to follow God's Spirit. That way, we won't consume one another. That way we won't be biting each other and devouring each other because the Holy Spirit would never lead us to talk badly about our brothers and sisters in Christ. Would never want us to say unkind, ungodly things about God's people. Would lead us instead to love each other. Um. God help us to remember we're called to liberty, consumed by love, and we're also to be conformed into his spirit. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your inerrant, infallible, holy word, which tells us not necessarily what we want to hear, but certainly what we need to hear. It's been a trying year for us, Lord brought many new and different challenges our way. Some we've handled well and some we've not. But God, we're glad to know that we can still lean on you. We can still trust you to to help us, to see us through. But God, help us today to take this message to heart. Especially in these Strange times that we're living in, Lord, may the confusion not creep in this church. May it not creep into the lives of your people. May we not be consumed by it like so much of our world has been. Help us to remember, Lord, what you've called us to, what you've consumed us with, and what you want us to be conformed with also. God, help us to love each other. Help us to love you. Live in a a way, God, that would glorify you and that would serve one another. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand.
sing the next verse I'd like to ask for all heads to be bowed all eyes to be closed I love the way this song says Lord empty me empty me of anything that might be a hindrance that ought to be the desire of all our hearts today God empty me of me so that you can fill me today Lord you can truly be in control so that the spirit can lead so that the spirit can win in my life not my flesh it's a hindrance to us to God's will being done in our lives but it's a hindrance in our churches too we don't like to think about that but folks that's the case the only way we're going to feel God's love when we walk into this church the only way it's going to be consuming for you and me is if there's no hard feelings, no hurt feelings, no biting and no devouring going on. And I know this is one of those messages where probably nobody wants to go to the altar because I'm afraid everybody would think you've been talking about them. You forget about that. Don't you worry about what anybody else thinks. You just listen to what God's saying to you today. You might lead a great movement in this church just by being honest, being truthful, being faithful. Which one wins is up to you. It's up to me. It's up to us. If the Spirit's leading you to come to this altar today, let Him win flesh you're saying no you don't need to go just stay back here let somebody else do that don't let the flesh win follow the spirit today if he's telling you to come you come on you don't need anybody else to lead you here he will just trust him today you obey him today he'll bless you for it Let him have his way as they sing. When your light, Lord, is shining upon me, there's no hiding. It's sweet 
house today. Amen. Thank you for letting us be here. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. If not say so now. I don't want you to leave. I wish you'd said something or done something. It's our decision every day. Yes. I pray we make the right one, the one Paul told us to walk in the spirit. I want to take up the, the love offering this morning. Can Need a volunteer for back here at this store, and at least one or two maybe outside. And 
I'm not above conscripting people. That means drafting. <laughs> ball, and, ball and tailing, whatever you want to call it. One for air. Okay, we're good now. Appreciate that. All right, let's continue to pray for this family. And uh, do what we can to help them. They're definitely our neighbor right now, no mm -hmm. doubt in my mind. Let's pray for them, church. All right, Brother Denny, close the prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you, Father. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here. 